Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up for the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with a couple of pieces of AMD news, the first of which is the third generation Threadripper. So we have a small update concerning the uh, memory channel configuration for these next generation processors. Uh, as a quick reminder, we have learned that the CPUs may launch in October, and also furthermore, I've been told by a very reliable source that we will see up to 64 cores for the third generation. The third generation of Ryzen Threadripper is said to be a derivative of Rome, and it will, much like Ryzen 3000, be compatible with existing motherboards, albeit you will need to perform a BIOS update on your existing TR4 motherboard or slash X399 if you prefer. As you can imagine though, uh, PCIe 4.0 may not function on existing boards, which may mean that you will need to purchase a new motherboard if you wish to enjoy PCIe 4.0 goodness, and clearly if you're laying down a lot of cash for potentially up to 64 uh, processor cores, uh, obviously I.O. on a HEDT system is kind of important, so I wouldn't be surprised if many people do opt to purchase a new board as well. But anyway, the rumour has it that we will only see four memory channels, which are of course DDR4, and there will be up to 64 PCIe 4.0 lanes. So this is a little bit different from the second generation of Epic, aka Rome, which supports up to eight memory channels. Now this has not been confirmed yet, and I'm trying to find out more information to see if this is actually the case, but obviously it would be one way that AMD could uh, separate the two markets, because if they did provide eight memory channels for a 64-core CPU, it may well, it probably would, not even may, it probably would eat into a lot of the Epic uh, sales because, well, for applications which really hammer I.O., why would you even decide to buy a, a single-core Epic processor when you could just buy Threadripper in its place? Just yesterday, there was also another patch which was added to freedesktop.org archives from AMD, uh, this one's a short piece of news, but I did want to quickly cover it to show that, yes, Navi 12, or Narve 12, as I prefer to pronounce it, uh, is actually coming along rather nicely with a couple of additional device IDs that have recently been added to the Linux driver patch. Um, so, in this instance, we have 0x7360 and Navi 10 device info, and also 0x69b0. It's kind of a wide range for device IDs. I mean, compare that to Navi 10, which is just above it with 731f, 731a, and 7318. At a guess, I think that we'll see the lower end cards, such as, I don't know what they're going to be called, but let's for the sake of this say the 5600 series, probably end up on store shelves as soon as possible. I suspect uh, AMD are waiting to shift inventory of like the 580s, the 570s and so on, because obviously if you've got a choice between buying like a five, uh, 5600 XT or like a 570, depending on the pricing of course, most folks are going to want to buy the uh, RDNA based GPU. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the prices of these GPUs end up being. And also, when we see them, considering uh, NVIDIA are being super aggressive right now for the lower end SKUs. Next up, I want to touch on Google Stadia, or Stadia, however you wish to pronounce it. Stadia has been eagerly anticipated, or at least it was when it was first announced, but I think a lot of the excitement around it has kind of diminished. That's my personal takeaway on that. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are a lot of people excited about Stadia. So many people assumed it would be a Netflix-style service. You would pay a flat uh, fee per month, and you would get access to whatever number of titles that Google had in its repository. So, for example, you would pay like 20 bucks a month, and then you could just stream however many titles and games you wanted. But quickly we learned that that's not exactly the case. 
There are two uh, tiers for this, and with one tier, you don't get any free games per month, and you're limited in terms of resolution. The other tier, you cough up a little bit more cash, and you get additional, you get some titles per month. And it's kind of interesting because Google's own Stadia page, says that Stadia Pro offers, quote, an ever-expanding library of free games, and also that additional free games are released regularly. And, of course, this is going to be starting with Destiny 2. So there isn't actually a number of free games mentioned. So you can take that to be one game per year, or you could take that to be 12 games uh, you know, a day. Obviously, I'm being a bit silly with the numbers, but you kind of get my point. But recently, Andrei Doronovchev was discussing Stadia in an AMA session. Uh, this He is actually the Google director. And he said, and I quote, to be clear, Stadia Pro is not a Netflix for games, like some people have mentioned. A closer comparison would be more like Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus. Pro subscribers get 4K HDR streaming, 5.1 sound, exclusive discounts and access to some free games, which equals to roughly one free game per month, give or take. Starting with Destiny 2, yay! And yeah, that's not actually that much because, hmm, I mean, Sony and Microsoft actually give away quite a few games per month. Sony PlayStation Plus typically uh, provides two PlayStation 4 games a month, and Microsoft, you usually get between two to four games a month. Let's say the average is three, which is not too shabby. The other fact is that I think for many, with uh, PlayStation Plus or, uh, say, Xbox Live Gold, to many, they're coughing up to actually being able to play online, plus other bits and bobs. And so the free games are more of a bonus, icing on the cake. I would actually say that to many people, whether uh, Google likes this or not, you're going to be more compared to Xbox Game Pass. And I've got to say, uh, I actually am trying Xbox Game Pass myself. This is off my own back. I'm not getting this as a review code or anything like that. So, uh, But I kind of got it uh, in preparation for Gears of War 5 and some other bits and pieces. And I have to say, I, I think that the value of Game Pass is pretty damn impressive. I still have some issues with not actually owning the game, so personally I would still rather own the physical copy, so if I really like Gears of War 5, I'll probably buy it, for example. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how well Stadia does. Uh, a lot of developers seem to like it, but whether it's embraced yet by gamers, well, what are your opinions on that one? The CPU market right now is super duper interesting because AMD have just launched the third generation Ryzen processors and despite a couple of teething problems initially it looks like with BIOS updates these are quickly being resolved by the company and they are flying off of shelves they look to be extremely popular. Intel are doing all they can by lowering the prices of the uh, ninth generation CPUs in fact currently on Amazon Prime uh, you can pay, you can pay uh, 400 Great British Pounds to purchase a 9900K, which is a significantly cheaper price than before the third generation Ryzen's launch. So that's definitely a good thing from the perspective of customers. But Intel are keenly aware that the 3950X CPU with its 16 cores, 32 threads of splendor is set to launch in September. So the company are rushing to launch Comet Lake and other processors. Full credit to Komichi on Twitter for first making this discovery. First up, we have the X299 Pro Prestige Board. It's the X299 creation. And it originates from MicroStar International, MSI's headquarters, which is located in Taiwan. Um, so this board would appear to indicate that the uh, next generation of Intel's HEDT lineup, which of course is going to be Cascade Lake X, will also see several new boards from different vendors as well, which isn't too surprising after all if they're releasing new uh, processors, that is Intel, uh, motherboard vendors are going to want to launch new uh, motherboards as well. It's going to be interesting to see what the actual final changes are going to be for Cascade Lake X and what the performance is going to end up being. 
I'm kind of looking forward to it, if only to do some comparisons against the uh, third generation Threadripper. As I'm not really certain how they can compete against TR3. I actually think that for the usage scenario, um, it's probable that Intel are going to be in a worse position with HEDT uh, compared to, you know, mainstream desktop. Speaking of mainstream desktop, we also have a shipment of a upgrade kit, basically a development kit, uh, kit, excuse me, test sample of Comet Lake S. It's 10 plus 2, which of course means uh, 10 processor cores plus integrated graphics. And this shipment actually was sent out yesterday, which is the 18th of July, and originates from Intel's headquarters in Delaware. So this processor is going to be the top of the line SKU in their Comet Lake lineup. Uh, it's interesting that we're seeing this. There have been a couple of different Comet Lake shipments over the past several weeks. I'm hearing different release dates for this CPU. One person has told me that it's going to be uh, the end of this year. Another person has said it's going to be uh, beginning of next year. And we've also seen some rumours that it may actually be in the uh, October month. Oh, sorry, month of October. That's made more sense. Uh, it's also possible, though, because the rumour said it was going to be a higher-end Intel desktop as well as a high-end uh, AMD uh, processor. So it's possible in this instance that they got confused and we're going to be seeing Cascade Lake X launch in October and Intel will launch Comet Lake a little bit later on. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel for more. You can also find us down below on social media, so do feel free to give us a follow on Twitter and Facebook for just random stuff and memes, which is always good. And you can also find us on Patreon, Amazon affiliate links, and there's also a newly added Green Man Gaming uh, affiliate link as well uh, just if you're not familiar with what gmg is uh it is essentially a platform where you can purchase cd keys but just so you know this is not you know a g2a type of situation these keys are officially licensed from uh their respective publishers so for example they work with bethesda capcom sega and so on so the keys are legitimate and currently gmg have a sale going so if you purchase purchasing a game you can always do so via that affiliate link and it gives us a couple of pennies and of course it doesn't cost you a penny more but i'm gonna let you all go take care of yourselves bye for now